Connection. I am here with Vince Agnew talking about his business. So, welcome to the show. Vince. Thanks for having me. So, how did you get involved with the business? Uh, Michigan Made was a concept um, that honestly came out of thin air. Thin air. It was a blessing to us. Uh, and allow these to be a blessing to others. Hopefully, that's our goal. Um, we were doing uh, youth free camps, free football camps every summer, back home in Grand Rapids, where I was from. Uh, they were going awesome. We used them to give back to various charities. Um, at that time, we were giving back to um, Lupus Research, and my wife was like, "You know, this is a thing by itself. This brand of camps that you're putting on is a thing. You should." continue this and not just do it here. You should take it all around the state and be able to give it to a lot of different kids and give them, give everybody opportunities. Um, and so we kind of batted around some names and some ideas and uh, she threw out Michigan Made and I'm the thinker, the drawer, the, the artist mind. So I started drawing pictures and trying to come up with logos um, and Michigan Made was born. So 2013, uh, that summer, uh, got, our, got our logo, got it trademarked. Um, and began working on the concept and brochures and just getting information out about what we wanted to do. Uh, it started off as just team camps. We were going to do just team camps. We were going to go to schools and offer camps, off, bring uh, college athletes, former pros, current pros to come to the schools, to high schools or elementaries to put on camps. And it grew to today. We are now offering various services and sports to kids all over the state. So that's pretty cool. Wow, that's interesting. So, what was it like to play football in the NFL? The NFL, man, that was a very surreal experience. Um, felt very accomplished. Uh, you turn the TV on and see all these people every week, and you and you idolize some of them, and then you know you get an opportunity, you get a phone call, and it's like you're going to be playing with some of those people and against some of those people. So it was super cool. Um, the environment, I'd say, is. Probably the, it is the most competitive environment I've ever been around. Um, there's people that are coming in every day, trying out for spots, people that are leaving every week that lost their spots. Um, you have to earn it every single day. Uh, I think it's something that people that do get the opportunity to play in the NFL, it's something that is uh, a quality um, that you learn. You, you know, you're already a competitive person by nature, but seeing competitiveness at that level and having to like really, really work to stay there every single day. If you have one off day, they might consider sending you back home and buying you a plane ticket. Um, it's something that you take with you, and I know it's something that I took with me, and I try to compete that hard all the time, whether even if it's not against somebody else, but against myself, just trying to do better than I did it the last time. Um, so yeah, it was an experience that I wouldn't trade for anything. Got to go a lot of cool places, meet a lot of cool people, um, play side by side with people that I like played with in the video games, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I can't complain at all. I feel like a very lucky kid um, that got to do follow a dream, and so I'm appreciative for it. Does you have a closest friend on the NFL? Do I currently have a closest friend in the NFL? Um, I have some guys that I play with in college that are still playing right now. Um, they're still doing their thing year 12. Uh, Nick Ballore still playing. Um, Eric Fisher is still playing. Uh, there's other guys that are still doing their thing in the NFL now, and also guys that are former players, that people that I played with um, while I was there. They're not necessarily in the NFL anymore, but it's a brotherhood. It's a very small circle of people, so there's still some people that I keep really close contact with um, that I've played with over that time. Wow. So like you missed them a lot. Yeah, there's some people that I miss a lot. I have some that are local. Uh, one of my best friends named Greg Jones, uh, he went to Michigan State. And I'm, I'm not a Michigan State fan. He went to Michigan State, so I always root him on. Uh, but we played together in the CFL, 
and he's one of my best friends today still. He lives wow. um, in the Detroit area. We stay in contact. Our kids are the same age. Um, we do some of our youth camps together still in the summers. Um, so there's some great relationships of people that I've that built over time and people that I miss that you don't really get to see anymore as much as life, you know, continues to grow and everybody's busy. But yeah, yeah still appreciate those relationships. Do you have a favorite football coach? Favorite football coach? I do not have a favorite football coach. I had a collection of people that really understood the game and really knew how to teach it. Uh, and I've seen other people that coach the game and teach the game and everybody has their own way. But the people that I had that taught me, I know that each level that I went to, there were things that carried with me that I was like, wow, that's exactly, I'm, now I'm in Division One college football and this is exactly what my high school coach, Darren Smith, taught me about playing DB. Like, he taught me all of the fundamentals, and these things all translate to where I am now in CMU, at CMU. And at CMU, I had great coaches, DB coaches, um, in my position room, Tim Banks, uh, who is now at Tennessee. Um, and, man, the things that I learned from those people, and, th and then they went on to go and do more and more themselves as well. Um, so I got to learn from a lot of great people along the way. I can't name just one for sure. Wow. What was your favorite memories of football? Favorite memories would be just hanging out with the guys, um, competing. It's always cool when you have friends and then you step on the field with those friends and you know that we're balling together, like we're in this together. It makes it that much more exciting in the games. And, you know, fans get excited and they get loud, but it's way more like internal, the excitement you have when you see a teammate that's a friend that's doing well and you get to know your teammates. So, just those relationships and being in the locker room and competing hard and trying to win. Everybody have a common goal. I think my favorite thing about the game of football and sports really in general is just that people from all over the place come together. And, you know, you get to meet people and you're like, oh, you're from California. I, I have never met somebody, anybody from Santa Monica, California before. I've, or you meet somebody that's from Oregon or Washington State. And, you're, you know, you just meet people from all over the place. And the more and more you climb in sport, the more diversity you see. And so that's pretty cool. Wow, well, thank you for joining Future One Connection. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're welcome. So this is <laughs> yeah. Chris Agnew, and I'm, I'm your host, Dr. Wright. Thank you for watching Future One Connection. Hi, welcome back to 321 Connection. This time, we'll be interviewing Cameron Block from The Loons. So Cameron, how did you get involved with the Great Lakes Loons? Um, I was at the baseball winter meetings um, in Las Vegas in 2018, I believe, um, and I was I had spent a couple years trying to find um, an organization that I really wanted to potentially work with, and I had a small list of uh, teams that I was considering uh, going to, and on that list was the Great Lakes Loons. And um, I ran into, a, uh, I think, four or five of the people who were there for the winter meetings and introduced myself, and uh, we talked, and they had a job, and uh, I... Uh, we talked about it for quite a while and thought it was a good fit. So I ended up uh, a couple months later moving across the country uh, in January of 2019. Wow. <laughs> it was a long drive. Have your past jobs always been baseball? Um, the two before uh, the Loons were both baseball uh, with the Mariners and with a minor league team um, that were part of the Mariners organization. Um, but before that, I actually worked for the University of Oregon for nine years, um, and then in a bunch of different uh, restaurants as I tried to work my way through college. So uh, not always baseball, but always um, with the University of Oregon, a lot of events and things like that. Wow. Yeah. How many years did you work for the Loons? Uh, so 2019 was my first year, um, so if we count, count that one, and even if we count the years where we didn't quite play baseball, um, it's been four years. So this was my, we just got done a couple of days ago with our fourth, uh, with my fourth season. Wow. It's, good, it's been a good time. Doesn't feel like four years, but it's been pretty fun. Yeah. 
What was your favorite memory of working with the loons? Uh, honestly, every year is full of good memories. Um, the my first year here, uh, we had uh, a couple of times where um, one of our celebrities would come in, and it was a phenomenal time, and the whole staff got to enjoy. Uh, that um, we had a guy named Jim O'Hare who worked on a show called Parks and Rec and Jim came in and treated us all like family and took us around town and just had the time of his life and we put on this concert and the whole thing was a lot of fun um, and that vibe that we had with the staff from that night uh, I realized is kind of the vibe that a lot of the other people who come to our games get to enjoy every day and so um, our favorite memory uh, is how every day has a chance to kind of bring that vibe to um, other people's lives. So, what's your what's your favorite memory for the Maloons? My favorite memory was watching the baseball and having food. And the food's incredible. What's your favorite food at the ballpark? Between pizza and ice cream. Pepperoni pizza and ice cream? Yeah. Solid choices. <laughs> Solid choices. How long did it work for the Mariners? Uh, so the Mariners, I was there for three years. Um, the uh, the year before that, I worked for one of their minor league teams, which is what the Loons are, a minor league team of the Dodgers. Um, wow. So technically, I guess I, I worked there for four years. Um, uh, one of them was just with their team that's about 30 minutes away from Seattle. So about four years. Wow. Yeah, it was a good time. What is important for the people to know about your job? To know about my job. Um, so I got into baseball because I love baseball. Um, but what's important for people to know about working in baseball is that if you want to watch the game, you can't work in baseball because we just don't get to watch any of it. All of the, all the behind the scenes and everything that's really remarkable and incredible and fun um, that takes a ton of work, and uh, people ask me, you know, do you do, do you like, you know, working in baseball because you get to watch it? No, we don't get to watch any of it. It's um, uh, it, it's a lot of work that happens under the stadium to make it fun. So if you if you want to work in baseball, just know you don't get to watch any baseball. Wow. <laughs> so when was the first time? Fireworks came to the loons. Fireworks. I think they started doing fireworks in year one. I think they, um, uh, we actually were having a conversation about fireworks for our 2023 season and trying to figure out how many is the right amount of fireworks. And um, people love them. People ask for more. And uh, in 2020, we were going to do a bunch of them before that season got canceled. And we kind of uh, settled on having a, a reasonable amount so that we would be good neighbors and not do it all the time because, you know, not everybody loves fireworks, but I think in 2007, I think they did fireworks on opening day. Wow. Well, yeah. uh, thank you for joining the Patreon Connection. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, this is Cam and Block, and I'm your host, Luke Jim Wright. Thank you for the Patreon Connection. The Lutons invited Patreon Connection to Inclusion Day 2022. Let's go to the Dow Diamond and talk with the people about inclusion. What does inclusion mean to you? Inclusion means involvement, uh, involvement of everybody regardless of our differences and no matter how unique we may be. Uh, and just having that um, mutual respect and love for one another regardless of how different we may be. What inclusion means to me is um, getting everybody involved in certain activities or anything that, um, that we offer around the community, whether you have a disability, whether your race is different than others. Um, inc inclusion means just having everybody be able to um, attend things that they want to attend without any barriers. Inclusion means uh, belonging. And uh, by belonging, it means we all, all are welcome, um, regardless of who we are, uh, where we're from, 
um, you know, it, that's that's the key is that we all have have a place in our community and uh, and welcome. It means that everybody of different races and different like disabilities can all be included. It means a lot to me uh, and everybody else too. So keep it going. I just want everyone to be included in everything, you know. There's no separation, no walls. Everybody can do the same thing, you know. So to me, inclusion means that everybody wants a friend. Everyone wants to be able to participate in any way that they can. So inclusion means the same thing to me as you need to feel like you belong no matter where you go. Um, whatever uh, friends you have, you want to be friends with everybody, you want to be included in their activities, you want to be a part of our community. Uh, so inclusion means to me uh, to uh, you know, actively make sure we're you know, taking action and doing work that to make everyone uh, feel included in the group. Um, if we are in a classroom at work uh, doing our best to ensure that everyone feels like they are um, involved and that they have a stake and that they can uh, really enjoy the environment that they're in. Inclusion means that everybody has equal opportunities and that everybody is loved and accepted for who they are. So to me inclusion means that you welcome every type of person maybe to an event or into your life so maybe someone with different um, faith background or a different cultural background maybe different gender, but you're welcoming and loving to every person that you meet. Inclusion to me is that there isn't a single person or entity that isn't thought of when we're making events or having things in the community where every single person is thought of and included and no one is a second thought. I'll simplify it, right? Inclusion is making sure there's provision of resources and opportunities. Um, uh, equal opportunities and resources. I think equal is very important to everyone in the community, in the society, especially paying attention to a group of individuals or group that in the society that could be marginalized. You know, individuals with special needs, individuals with disabilities, minorities amongst us, making sure we're paying close attention and they get equal opportunity and resources as everyone else. For me, inclusion means making sure everybody is included and there are uh, atmospheres where everybody can partake and participate. Inclusion to me means building a team atmosphere and a togetherness where everyone feels like they have a home and something to be a part of. How can Midland be more inclusive? I think this is a hard thing to tackle, but it's not something just Midland needs to do. I, it's, we need to put away us, our stereotypes, and instead of seeing differences as bad or negative things that are scary, we need to look at them as unique things that have us stand out from each other that we can embrace and love. Midland does a lot for inclusion. I guess maybe businesses include more job opportunities and or volunteering positions, but overall I think Midland does a great job as including everyone. Midland can be more inclusive by having more awareness of what we can do as a community to improve uh, you know, our inclusion and how we can involve each and every one of us uh, to have more fun and to be all together as one, yeah? That sounds fun. Yeah. It can be more inclusive by accepting everybody for who they are and be willing to participate, play games, and include them in everything and get to the point where with sports do unified teams where you have um, special needs athletes versus those that are of the general population. So if everybody works together, it can, it's we're all one because we all have our own different encounters and life's experiences, so we all know the same thing. That's cool. Well, here at Cultural Awareness um, Center, we, or coalition, we are trying to have um, education, having people understand what um, we are as a community. So we have, you know, River Days that's coming up for kids and anybody can come and with their family and enjoy the fun and, um, and also 
again, it's educating who we are in the Midland community and um, understanding where they're coming from. We can let people do things that, like, we can do and we can help them feel included by, let, like, helping, helping them learn. embracing the differences. Have Midland people be included in everything. Just to break down the barriers so that people can, you know, navigate the steps and get into things that are difficult to get into. So make things on an even plane. I'd love to see more activities like this. Um, I think this is great. The Miracle League is great. Having sports events where our kids can go to is just such a wonderful way to be included. And for me, I think about accessibility, that we want people in wheelchairs and walkers and elderly to have accessible places to go with bathrooms and ramps and places for wheelchairs so that you can go to any activity in our community that you want to go to. I think Miller can be more inclusive by uh, really engaging in events like this, Inclusion Day at the Loons, uh, to come and learn from uh, organizations and groups and individuals that are uh, engaged in inclusivity work and understand how they can be, you know, allies and advocates for others. Um, also, just a lot of, you know, deep reflection and um, self-reflection about what we do every day and kind of how we show up and if we are creating an environment to make others um, feel like they're included and that they uh, belong and that they're safe uh, and again to enjoy a good quality of life that we know that Midland can provide. Uh, to start you know events like this that bring the community together that do include everyone provide these equal opportunities and put everyone in the same light and also bring awareness to the fact that we do need to be more inclusive in our community. Um, so I think that's, that's where we start, is more events to just bring the awareness about it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build on that, right? Awareness, right? Do we all understand what being inclusive means? And it starts with events like this and the opportunities that we can take to further educate our community, make sure we reach everyone wherever they are so they understand what it truly means, because I as a person may feel that I'm being inclusive, but if I don't have the true knowledge of what it means, then I may not be going about it the right way. So start with creating awareness, educating ourselves, and then you know working, partnering with one another within the community to look for opportunities for us to make sure those equal opportunities that I mentioned earlier, those resources are accessible and available to everyone, regardless of where they're from, what they look like, what their beliefs are, or what they do not believe in. To me, that's one of the ways for us to even get started. I've noticed as a high school teacher, non-inclusive language used a lot in our school. And I think maybe helping for teachers with that training for knowing that, that non-inclusive language is not right and that we teach kids that it's not right either. I think we continue to do events like this. Uh, Inclusion Day uh, is, is, is just phenomenal. And you can see the, the organizations that are represented here today. Um, truly represent our community so it's a great way to bring everybody together in one space learn more about each other and uh, raise awareness and learn how we can support each other uh, within our communities I think that Midland can be more inclusive when there are emergencies or there's different things that come up and no one is a second thought so like when the when Midland flooded that you know every single person was included and everyone was um, taken care of in the emergency and, and so I would like to see Midland be more inclusive in that in that sort of way. I think this is incredible to have so many different community partners here and just showing their love and commitment to being inclusive to the community.
Not even two more. No, he's here. 